Now, the Liberal Democrats were jubilant after holding on to Chris Hewn's seat at the Eastie by-election on Thursday, but the pictures that dominated the papers afterwards were of Nigel Farage, the UK Independence Party leader, celebrating in style. They may not have won Eastleigh, but UKIP's strong showing in a constituency where they had little track record has given them a boost. So after winning 28% of the vote and pushing the Tories into third place, was it rather more than a protest vote? Well, Nigel Farage joins me this morning. Good morning. You must be kicking yourself this morning because potentially if you had stood, I mean, you could be sitting here as UKIP's first Member of Parliament. Well, we had a very good candidate in Diane James. There's no evidence I would have got any more votes than her. Really? Uh, no, absolutely none whatsoever. Um, and the point is, the reason I didn't stand is I want to lead the party into the European elections, which take place next year, uh, where I believe uh, that we can cause a really historic result. So we didn't quite get over the line. Uh, the, the postal vote system in, in by-elections really does count against us uh, because there simply isn't time to reach everybody. But look, no complaints. We're delighted. It's our best ever parliamentary performance. And I think there's every reason to believe that there'll be more to come. I suppose perhaps you've been quite canny because actually if you had stood and won that seat, you could have, if it was really just a protest vote, you could have lost it quite clearly at the next election. Well, the protest vote thing is the default position for the establishment. Oh, it's just a protest vote. You yourself admitted mid -term, there was an element of protest vote. I heard you on the day after. Mid-term, don't worry, it'll all disappear. Yeah, some people who voted UKIP probably used it as a chance to stick two fingers well, up to the establishment. I mean, if you just look but, at the figures, I mean, Lord Ashcross, no, 83% of UKIP no, no, voters no, 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 said no. they were sending a message that they were unhappy no. with the party. 83% of UKIP voters look at our three established parties and say they're all social democrats, you can't put a cigarette paper between them on policy, there's nothing to choose, we're not being given a real choice, and no one speaks for us. They don't just vote UKIP because they dislike the other three, they vote UKIP on policy. And what we're saying to people, we're putting ahead in, in front of them, is a common sense idea of how we should control our borders, of what our relationship with Europe should be, of what we should be doing about the looming energy crisis. So actually, people vote for UKIP because they see us offering policy solutions. But a lot of them, you know yourself, there was a big element of protest vote, wasn't there? I mean, a lot of people were doing it, were voting UKIP because they wanted to stop other parties. It's a rejection of our current political class who, when it comes to really tough issues like open door immigration and the prospect of Romania and Bulgaria having full access to Britain next year, all they want to do is sweep it under the carpet. We're prepared to talk about it. Right, so your next challenge, the uh, May elections, the, yep. local, the, the local elections, you polled around 13% of the vote last time. That was mm -hmm. five, percentage, five points more than the year before. Go on, give us your predictions. Where are you going to be this time? Are we going to well, see sort of 28% of the vote? I mean, the first thing we're going to do um, is to fight those elections on a bigger scale than ever before. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to put 2,000 candidates into the field. Um, and what we need to do as a party is to establish breakthroughs. Now, the difficulty for UKIP is that our support comes from across the spectrum. If you read today's Sunday papers, you would think there's a pitch battle between UKIP and the Conservative Party going on. Only a third of our vote in Eastleigh came from the Conservatives. Two thirds came from Lib Dems, Labour and people who hadn't voted for anybody for the last 20 years. So we're going to fight broadly in these elections. We've got some ideas where we're going to target and what we need to do in May is make some breakthroughs. Yeah, and uh, you really do need to make yeah. some breakthroughs because you obviously you raised your increase of the, the vote last time round, but that translated to what one more councillor. I mean, that is, yeah. your, that is your problem at the moment. You may get the headlines, you may take these large shares of the votes in something like Eastleigh, but it's not translating yet, is it? No, because we, you know, we live under a first-past-the-post system uh, and normally new parties that come along um, have a geographical uh, bias, the Scottish National Party, um, or they draw from a certain segment of the population, be it poor people or rich people, uh, and UKIP draws from across the board. So our strength is we exist everywhere, we can do well absolutely everywhere in the country, but our weakness at the moment is we don't have the hot spots where we've got clusters of already elected councillors, and that's what we're working on. What about the television debates uh, coming up before the next election? Do you, do you think you've got a stronger case now or not? Well, I think that depends. I, I mean, mean, look... David you know, Cameron has said no, hasn't he, quite clearly? Well, of course. <laughs> He'd rather not debate anything. No, the point is we've got to make some breakthroughs in local elections and we'll also be judged very much on what happens in the European elections of 2014 because that will determine where we are in the national opinion polls. But, I mean, quite honestly, if we were at this kind of level heading up to 2015 to be excluded 
from those debates would be absolutely ludicrous. It's quite interesting looking at the papers this morning. I mean, there's the, the sort of talk about European Convention on Human Rights taking Aye. Britain out of that yeah. and also yeah. limiting yeah. access to uh, yeah. immigrants on the NHS. But the, you know, the Conservatives potentially, if they go go mm. forward with that, they're going to take the wind out of your sails, yeah. aren't they? Jam tomorrow. That's what we keep hearing from the Conservatives. Promises about what they might do if they win the next general election. Just as we heard the same promises from them before the election of 2010. I think the real problem that the Conservatives have got isn't UKIP. The real problem they've got is their own supporters. Look at a Conservative Party that used to talk about wealth creation, low tax, enterprise. It now talks about gay marriage and wind farms. Um, and when these promises are made, no one believes them anymore. Okay, Nigel Farage, thank you very much. Thank you.